Well, good morning. Welcome to Chess Base Workshop. My name is Steve. Thank you for clicking on that link and joining us. For some reason, my clock is running. Let's try a new game. There we go. That's better. We've been talking about opening books. First of all, how to create a database, and then how to create an opening book based on that database. That's what we've been looking at in the last couple of workshops. Now we're going to look at the opening book. This is going to be a basic tutorial on opening trees, opening books. It's not going to tell you every last little gory detail about it. That'll be another subject for another time. But we will look at opening trees and how you would use them to help you as a human player. Not necessarily how you're going to use them in Fritz. We covered that last week, by the way, where we talked about how the fact that when you load an opening book, as I have done, when you create an opening book on the Budapest defense, how once you have loaded that opening book, it forces Fritz to play nothing but the Budapest. If you create an opening book on a particular opening, it forces Fritz to play nothing but that opening. What we want to look at, though, is what you can learn from an opening book <coughs> Excuse me, as a human player. We're looking at the opening position of a game of chess. Here's our opening book on the Budapest defense. What we see here is we've created it from 4,104 games. That's what the numbers above the line indicate. It's indicative of the entire database at that point at the, at the opening. 4,104 games. White wins. Now, the percentage, you need to understand, is a percentage of the available points that you can score in those games. In other words, you've got 4,104 games. In tournaments, a game is worth a point. As you know, if you win, you get a point. If you draw, you split the point with your opponent. You get a half point each. And if you lose, you get not a zip, bupkis, squadu. So of the 4,104 available points in these games, had they all been tournament games, white would win 59.1% of the available points. Now, I had a guy on the phone the other day ask me, what about black? <laughs> Well, because it's a percentage, the number, the two numbers have to add up to 100. So in this case, 40.9% of the uh, available points would have gone to black. Uh, we have the average rating of the players who played in this database. Now, in other words, white and black combined. The average rating is 2194. And a performance rating, you can look up online. There's a mathematical formula. Basically, if a performance rating is higher than the average, it means that the moving side did well in that particular line by playing that particular move. Okay? So, for example, here we see 1D4 was played 4,061 times. 59.3% of those games, uh, the available points in those games, were went to white. The average rating of the players who played 1D4 is 2196 and the performance rating of course goes up accordingly goes up a little bit because they did win you know so the majority of the games or or draw you know got a favorable result win or draw from the majority of those games what you have over here is stuff that involves fritz um, what it is is these are percentages where what fritz's probability of playing a particular move is these are tweakable and that's a whole other can of worms I'm not going to get into in this video. You can adjust these. You can play around with these. But what I'm mainly looking at here is what all this stuff means to you as a human player. When you look at the 49.3%, the number is given from white's standpoint. So, for example, after 1d4, you have black's reply, knight f6, 59.3%. That does not mean that black has has had a favorable result 59.3% of the time. The numbers are still given from white standpoint, meaning that numbers above 50 are good means means it was good for white. Numbers below 50 means it was good for black. You can change this, by the way. I'll show you if you right click and go to properties. There's a box checked here. It says result from white side. If you uncheck that, it changes the numbers here so that you always see it from the moving side instead. We'll demonstrate. 59.3, 1D4, 59.3. When you go to black, suddenly it drops to 40.7 for black's move because it's showing it from black's standpoint. Again, if you change that, result from white side, the number changes back to 59.3. I leave it 
with result from white side check, mainly because the tree was not adjustable in chest-based products for a long time. The numbers were always from the white side, so I've just gotten used to that, but you can change that. But for this video, we'll look at the numbers from white's standpoint. So again, the percentage means that white is, uh, you know, the, it's from the white standpoint. Numbers above 50 mean a move was good for white in the final results of the games. Numbers below 50, better for black. What's interesting about these two moves, and you always get these wise guys that always want to try to back into a queen's gambit by making you think they're going to play the English, they play 1c4. And by the way, when you want to go through the tree, you go up here to engine, switch the engine off, otherwise uh, Fritz tends to make moves when you don't want it to. So go up to engine and click switch off engine. But coming back here, you get people that, that want to kind of make you think they're going to play the English. And then you play this, then they play this. Ha ha, I'll play a Queen's Gambit, fool. Ha ha, you've been faked out. Okay, I'll play a Budapest. I've done this myself, and it's great when you see the look on their face, because they go, huh? Because they think they're going to get a, a Queen's Gambit out of it. What's interesting to note about the numbers, though, is that black actually does better when uh, white plays 1c4. Now it changes, by the way, because once this... These, this move is played, you're back into the, you've transposed back into the, the regular opening. But I think this is really cool. When 1c4 is played, uh, black does better because white doesn't, doesn't understand apparently that we've transposed into an opening and isn't quite sure what to do here. So I think that's kind of cool. <coughs> Excuse me. There is a feature you can activate, by the way. And I'll show you how to turn it on and off. We'll turn it off first. You saw there was a colored bar down here. Uh, the way to turn that on in case you don't have that on, because that's important. It's a really useful tool. If you right-click, go to Properties, and select Statistics, you get that bar down there at the bottom that has an exact breakdown of what this 59.3% means. It means that white won 47% of the games, black won 28%, and the other 25% were draws. This is really interesting and useful. Because when you see a 59.3, you start thinking, oh, white has won more than half the time. Well, that's not what that percentage means. It means that white got almost 60% of the available points. That does not mean that white won 60% of the games. Down here, you get the exact breakdown. Green bar, and, and this, this is a quick visual representation of what these numbers tell you over here. Green bar is white wins, red bar is black wins, the gray bar represents the draws. So we see that white wins 1,899 games, which is 47%. So white actually wins just about half the time, which is still a pretty good percentage, by the way. Black wins just over a quarter of the time, and the balance are made up of draws. And you can see exact numbers here. 1,899 white wins, 1,017 draws, 1,145 black wins. This is really useful information because it tells you exactly what this number up here in percentage represents. Let's move ahead to a position where there's a bunch of replies right here because I want to show you another cool feature. You can sort the list by a number of criteria. The default is the number of games. However, if you click on percentage, it resorts the moves so that they're in order of percentage from best to worst. You can also do it by the average and by the performance rating as well. thing I want to mention about ratings, by the way, um, I very seldom use this particular feature right here. I don't look at these numbers very often because I don't necessarily think that a high average rating of players who played a particular opening is necessarily indicative of it being a better opening. In fact, it may be the opposite. There may be openings out there where the reason why everybody who plays it seems to be, or the average rating of people that play an opening seem to be 2,400, 2,500 plus, is because that opening may require advanced knowledge that those of us down here in, at the club level don't have. So it may be a great opening for a grandmaster to play. It may not be a great opening for an average club player to play because you don't have the skill and the expertise to know what's going on in that opening, to know why a particular square is being fought over, or even that a particular square is being fought over. Sometimes that knowledge is, is not part of our arsenal. So I don't look at this that much, although in general some people like to say, you know, if the higher the average, the better the opening. 
In this case, there may be something to it. People have argued for a hundred years about whether the Budapest is sound or not. So, you know, but take these numbers with any, any numbers that you see here, by the way, take them with a big grain of salt. They are factual. They are averages based on, in this case, 4,104 games. But numbers can steer you wrong because the numbers don't always tell the whole story. The rating of the player, not always the whole story. Something down here I'll show you when we click percentage. G3 wins 100% of the time for white. What does that actually mean? Does that mean if you play G3, that's an insta win? That doesn't mean anything of the sort. It means what, what, that, what this means, what this 100% means. First of all, the reason why it's grayed out is because there's only been one game in which that move was played, which means there's not a high enough statistical sampling to be able to say this is a reliable number. Okay, when a, when a move has been played over 3,000 times and white gets 61.5% of the available points, you can kind of take that to the bank. You can rely on that because that's an awful lot of games. One game means nothing. However, if you want to, if you just play by the numbers, okay, you can just go on and just play the whole way out to the end. To the end of the book. Now... One game, 100% for white. Does what that mean white wins here? Is this a winning position for white? It may be and it may not be. What you have done is you have followed a game that two other players have already played. You followed the exact moves that two other players have already played in a single game in which white won. That is not remotely the same thing as saying this is a winning position for white. All you've done is follow somebody else's game out to the end of the opening book, and it's a game that white won. Now, if you want to check this position, you want to check how good it is for white, you could always go here to infinite analysis and have a look. And it does seem to be okay for white. And I think that's primarily because I think white is still material down. I don't think he got his gambit pawn back, but I wasn't looking at the opening. Uh, well, let's count. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, six. So white didn't get his gambit pawn back. So that's why, or I mean, I'm sorry, Black didn't get his gambit pawn back, so that's why White is ahead here. But is it a winning position for White? Possibly. He's 1.21 pawns ahead. There's that missing pawn. The gambit pawn has not been regained. And then there's an additional quarter of a pawn advantage as well. But it's not a guaranteed insta-win for the White player. That's why you have to be careful about following moves blindly in an opening book because they will often lead you astray if all you're worrying about is the percentage. But here we have a whole bunch of different options. And what we do find out, what we can learn from this, by the way, is that when white accepts the gambit pawn, he does pretty well. But when you start looking at games where white does not accept the gambit pawn, black actually does pretty well here. So statistically, it's in white's best interest to take the pawn. Then it's up to black to figure out how he wants to play it. And there's a couple different ways for black to play here. The the top two moves, uh, knight g4 and knight e4, those are the popular ways to play. Those are what you find in the books. Um, you may occasionally find bishop b4 as an example of how not to play it. But the value of an opening tree is that you have taken an entire database of games, in this case over 4,000 games and compress them down into what is in essence a single game to where you can step through a game step through the tree and look at numbers and see what statistically works and what doesn't now the question is what is this really used for if you can't trust the numbers these are guideposts these are ways for you to guide your play look at the numbers but think about the numbers why would for example uh, one move be better than another. Why does accepting the gambit work what better for white than declining the gambit? These are things you need to think about. You can find interesting ideas, interesting thoughts to guide your own chess study by looking at the opening book. This, If you're thinking about playing the Budapest or if you play at the club and you're playing the white pieces and a black player is always playing the Budapest, 
it's interesting for you to investigate this and see why the gambit should be accepted rather than declined. You go into your chess books, you go to chess magazines, you go to chess videos, you go to chess databases like Mega Database, where uh, there are annotated games, and you try to find these answers. But if you hadn't looked at this opening tree, you might not have even known the question. That question might not have even popped into your head. Why is accepting this gambit better than declining it? You might not have ever thought about that had you not looked at this tree. However, it is not, as I said, it is not a good idea to go around just following numbers blindly. I'll give you an example. And again, this, this would be where you just race through the moves and you come to this point where you've run out of book. I recently wrote a blog post about a game from a correspondence database that Chessbase offers in which two average players were playing a correspondence game. They played the first 14 moves perfectly. They were perfect book moves. And then a guy made a non-book move, and his opponent, his very first move out of book, trashed his game. He destroyed his game with a single move right out of opening book. We're ate up with openings. Everybody loves to study the openings, but unfortunately, after the opening, there comes something called the middle game. You need to know how to play that and the end game, assuming you get that far. You can spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours studying openings, and you might be able to play every opening known to man perfectly out to 12, 14, 15 moves, but if you don't know what comes next, if you don't have any idea of strategic thought, tactical ideas, whatever, you're going to get crushed. And I recently blogged about that. I had a game where this guy, they play, these two guys play this opening to perfection. And the first move out of book that the one player made destroyed his game instantly, just self-destructed. He, he might as well have committed Harakiri right there at the board. It was, it was sad. So don't just follow the numbers blindly. And this is why there are numbers that are in half tone, as we'll see. It's not enough. There's not enough games. One game is not enough. Two games, not enough to get a accurate statistical sampling. Even down here we get to 25, 26 games, it's still grayed out because there's just not enough games there to be able to say, okay, yeah, this is a reliable figure. This is something you can take to the bank. So just be aware of that when you go through the opening book. What it does is it will guide your study, it will guide your play, but it is not a be-all and end-all. You have to understand what goes into those numbers. And just because it has a 100% score with one game or two games or a handful of games doesn't make that an insta-win at all. So just be very aware of that. But I want to show you how you could resort all these moves by different criteria. Another thing to realize about the opening book as well is that as you're playing moves through the opening book, if you go back to the notation pane, there they all are. That's everything you looked at is in the notation pane. Every little branch that you went down is there. For example, if we just go through some moves here, we go back to the notation pane, and it's just been added. D5, bishop b4 check, bishop d2. But that's how you read this information. That's what I really wanted to impress upon you, was what all of this means. There are other things you can do with the opening book, and we'll look at them at a future time. But I just wanted to show you what all this is. I was on the phone with a guy for an hour the other day explaining all this to him, and I thought it would be a good idea to go over it in a video here in Chess Base Workshop. So there you go. That's how you look at an opening book. That's what these numbers mean. Till next time, for Chess Base Workshop, I'm Steve Lopez reminding you to please do... Have fun.